A phone rang in Adyar, Chennai in 1977. It was meant for Rukmini Devi Arundel, a renowned Bharatanatyam dancer, a theosophist, an activist for animal welfare, and the first woman in Indian history to be nominated as a member of the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of the Parliament of India. On the other line of the phone was the then Prime Minister of India, Morarji Desai. He asked her if she would consent to be the president. President of what? She asked. President of India, said the Prime Minister. She politely declined the offer. In this video, we take a look at the life of a legend who chose her dance over the presidency. She was born on a rare leap year day on 29th February in 1904 in Madurai, Tamil Nadu, into a Tamil Brahmin family with seven siblings. Her father, Neil Kant Shastri, though an engineer by profession, was a Sanskrit scholar and a historian who was also drawn to Buddhism and later to the social reforms of Annie Besant. Since her mother, Shishmal, was a music enthusiast, Rukmini Devi was exposed to dance, music, and culture within the precincts of her home. Neil Khan Shastri was very closely associated with Theosophical Society based in Madras. Quite naturally, she was influenced by liberal humanistic ideas of society. She was always a wonderful singer. Even now, she's... Besides the influence of her father, another individual who greatly impacted her ideology and thoughts was none other than Dr. Annie Besant, the British co-founder and president of the society. Little did Lokmani Devi know that the Theosophical Society would eventually become the fundamental truth of her life. In 1920, aged 16, she stunned her family and society by tying the knot with 42-year-old Dr. George Arundel, a British theosophist. She also ended up becoming the president of the All India Federation of Young Theosophists in 1923 and president of the World Federation of Theosophists in 1925 owing to her theosophical activities. Rukmini Devi happened to see one of the ballet of Anna Pavlova in London during the 1920s. Rukmini, who frequently travelled to Europe, saw Anna's famous ballet, Dying Swan, in 1925 and was moved by the performance. Dr. Arundel and Rukmini made it a point to attend Anna Pavlova's performances when she returned to India in 1928. Later, the couple was scheduled to depart from Mumbai for Australia and to Rukmini's great surprise. She discovered that Anna was also in the same ship. The two artists talked for hours. The dancer saw a kindred spirit in Rukmini Devi and their friendship grew. In Sydney, Anna advised Rukmini Devi to learn dance. Anna requested one of her leading solo dancers, Cleo Nordi, to teach Rukmini Devi the first lessons in ballet. But after some days, Anna felt that Rukmini, with her theosophical background, should take up Indian dancing instead. In 1933, at the Music Academy's annual conference, Rukmini Devi saw a performance of the Bharatanatyam dance form known as Sadir for the first time. She was enchanted by the dance and wanted to learn it. Unfortunately, at that point of time, classical music and dances were limited to Devdasis. Her goals included revitalizing a moribund Indian dance form and dispelling the negative social perceptions attached to it. Eventually, she started to learn the dance from Mylapur Gauri Amma, an expert in Abhinaya. She also managed to persuade the famous dance maestro Minakshi Sundaram Pillai to be her guru. In December 1935, Rukmini Devi gave her first public performance at the Diamond Jubilee Convention of the Theosophical Society. It was a path-breaking performance and was applauded by the large gathering of over 2,000 people. She soon introduced musical instruments like the violin, set and lighting design elements, creative costumes and jewellery inspired by temple sculptures, changing the fundamental nature of dance. Her groundbreaking dance dramas, which were inspired by mythology, epics and scriptures, were created in collaboration with a number of current classical musicians, artists and gurus of many dance styles. She and her husband founded Kalashetra an academy of dance and music based on the traditional Indian Gurukul system in January 1936. So, the Kalakshetra style means the most ancient 
and traditional style as I saw it. Because before I danced, the dance had already become mixed up with many other varieties of culture and the traditional was nearly lost. The Indian Parliament designated the Kalashetra Foundation as an institute of national importance under a law that was passed in January 1994. In April 1952 and again in 1956, Rukmini Devi received nominations to serve in the Council of States of the Indian Parliament. She was Rajya Sabha's first nomination for an Indian woman. She took a keen interest in animal welfare and was involved with several humanitarian organizations and as a Rajya Sabha's member contributed to the passage of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act and the subsequent establishment of Animal Welfare Board of India which she presided over in 1962. Rukmini Devi Arundel, who devoted her entire life attempting to revive traditional Indian art forms, passed away on February 24, 1986 at the age of 82. Until her death, she remained a member of the board. She was honoured with the Padma Bhushan in 1956. In 1987, India's Postal Department issued a 60 paise commemorative stamp in honour of the great dancer. Later, in 2009, it released a definitive stamp of Rs. 5 in her memory. In 2016, Google honoured Rukmini Devi on her 112th birthday with a doodle. Later, in the month marking the 80th year of Kalakshetra Foundation, it held Remembering Rukmini Devi Festival of Music and Dance. Google also featured her in the 2017 Google Doodle for International Women's Day. Her legacy, Kalakshetra, still flourishes as a fountainhead of the country's classical dance and musical heritage.